What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Jack Beasley. I'm a sports photographer and videographer in the Phoenix metro area. Now, if you've been a subscriber or watched several of my uh, videos in the past, you've probably seen that I've been absent from YouTube here for the last couple months. Uh, for that, I apologize. Uh, between my day job, my uh, business, uh, photo and video, business that is expanding, plus family responsibilities, uh, just I don't have the time to do it. But I am back today and I'm talking about one of my favorite products that is out there right now. And it's not because they sponsored me, because they did not. However, the XO did give me a copy of Pure Raw 5 to uh, check out. And I'm going to talk about it today. And I'm using a sports photographer's perspective on this one. There's a lot of other YouTube channels talking about this product. But uh, just I'm taking it from my perspective as a guy who often shoots people in action under very poor lighting conditions sometimes. So let's get into it. Now, if you watch some of my previous videos about Pure Raw 4, you know that I talk it up quite a bit. And I talk it up quite a bit, again, not because they're sponsoring me, but because I really, really like the product. They've come out with a new version, Pure Raw 5. And it hit the market about a week and a half, two weeks ago as I'm filming this. So I'm a little late to the game, but I really wanted to have an opportunity to check it out use it under some real world, you know, experiences at games and see how it worked out. And before I really came to you guys with how I felt about it. So I have images from a couple of different games that I'm going to show you both nighttime, very high ISOs and daytime, lower ISOs. But I want to check out a specific thing about the product. And that's why I shot it during the day. Now, in this video, I'm not just going to review it. I'm going to compare it. I'm going to compare it to Lightroom's Denoise, and I'm going to compare it to Topaz Photo AI. I'm also going to do some comparisons to the previous version, Pure Raw 4. So before we get into the photo comparisons, I just want to throw out a, a few specifications at you, because uh, I think this is important. So when we want to compare Pure Raw 5 to 4, a couple of things I wanted to look at was how fast does it process images and how fast does it load images? Now, I took the latest version of 4, which is 4.9, was the latest version I could get uh, downloaded. And I discovered that when I bulk processed 10 files, the Pure Raw 4.9 did it in 1 minute and 45 seconds. Uh, Pure Raw 5, excuse me, 5 did it in 1 minute 34 seconds. And if you want to really take another comparison to both of those, I also processed it in Lightroom's Denoise, the same images. And what I found was when I compared those three is the Pure Raw 4, latest version 4.9, processed 10 images. Uh, each image averaged out to 6.45 seconds. When I processed it in Pure Raw 5, those same 10 images took 6.34 seconds. So not a huge difference, but slightly better. Now, when I took it into Lightroom and used the denoise module, it took 7.17 seconds a piece. So there is a fairly significant difference, almost a second difference between one and the other. The other thing I checked was how long does it take to load huge galleries, which is what I sometimes do. You know, I may shoot a game, come back with 3,000 images between a couple camera bodies. I may call that down to about 1,000, and I'll just throw it all in pure raw and have a process overnight because I'm not necessarily on a deadline most of the time, so I can get away with that. So I took a gallery of 902 images, loaded it into Pure Raw 4.9, and it took 36 seconds to load the entire gallery in there. 900 images, 36 seconds. When I tried it in Pure Raw 5, exact same group of images, it took uh, 21 seconds. So 21 versus 36. Again, not astronomical difference, but as you can see, they've done something to Pure Raw 5, as opposed to 4, where it processes quicker. All right, so let's go into Pure Raw 5, and I'm going to walk you through the process, how it works, and some of the features and functions. And then we'll go into some images, and we'll compare them, and we'll compare them to Lightroom Classics Denoise, and later on we'll compare it to Topaz Photo AI. All right, let's get to it. All right, so what is the difference between Pure Raw 4 and Pure Raw 5? Well, if you go to their website, DxO's website, they've added this thing called Deep Prime 3. Pure Raw 4 had Deep Prime. They've apparently updated it. They say it's their third generation. Uh, they call it Deep Prime 3. 
I guess they didn't want to call it D prime two. I don't know. Anyway, they also have this D prime XD two S. Now this was also in four, pure raw four, but now it's in five along with this D prime three. So as far as the two differences between the two, that's kind of the biggest changes right there. If we go to pure raw five, you've got this input right here. You can add raw images to Lightbox. If you do that, uh, you can do it a couple of ways. You could drag and drop, as it says, or you could just, uh, you click on this and it brings up a Windows Explorer. So DxO does this thing where if you import an image that it doesn't have the appropriate module for it, as in a camera and lens combination, it'll want to download it. So this is something I really like about the DxO products is they are set up to sharpen based on the image that you're, or the raw file that you're uploading. All right, so let's add a few images to the light box and see what we come up with. I'll drag some over and you'll see it starts to populate and it does it pretty quickly. And once again, this is our only raw files. It does not operate off of TIFFs or uh, JPEG. So once you've loaded all the images, you could do this a couple different ways. You can pick out individual images that you want to process. You could process every single one of them, but you might want to take a look at one of your images uh, under the same kind of lighting conditions as the rest of them. And I just picked this one right here. And you've got a couple options. You could just go ahead and process it, or you could process with preview. But let's do process with preview right now. So you can see it's got a split screen thing here. Uh, on one side, we have original raw. Right now, it's got deep prime XDS2 slash XD loaded. You have some options over here to the right. You can set it up. You can set up presets ahead of time, and I've actually built one for myself. Or you could just select one of the three of the two that are uh, available to our raw files from Nikon, deep prime three, or uh, the XDS2, you could set up the, your output format. I prefer DNG, so Lightroom will treat it like a raw file when it gets over there. Or you could actually output all of these at the same time if you so wanted to. Uh, I don't want to, so I'm not going to do that. You can set up what folder you want to go to, either the, the original or a custom location. You could change the naming procedure. Uh, for this, I'll just leave it at the file name. You could give it some different options as to what it does after processing. Like, for example, you could send it straight over to Lightroom, if you so choose, or to Photoshop. Kind of up to you. I'll just leave it the way it is right now. But let's look at a couple. Let's look at this image right now and check it out. And I'm going to zoom in on his face because really, for sports, that's what I'm concerned about is people's faces. We've zoomed in on his face and we're at Deep Prime XDS2. When I slide this back and forth, you see the huge difference between the original with all that noise and the finished product or what will be the finished product. So let's look at it, Deep Prime 3. And what I've noticed about Deep Prime 3 is it tends to be a little noisier actually than the XDS2 version. And I'll switch over to that real quick. So very fine, smooth noise reduction. Pretty good detail in the face, lots of detail in the hair, uh, nice and sharp. If we go over to Deep Prime 3, let me switch back now, it's updating. It's a little noisier, and what I found is it tends to make the sharpness level reduce somewhat, which is maybe what you actually want. So when you're examining your images from a particular event, you might want to compare the two, which ones are working, you know, before you start bulk processing the whole darn thing. But in general, my personal preference is the XDS2. I really like the, uh, as it's updating, I really like that fine uh, grain pattern that it does. And I think I really like the sharpening that it does in the faces. So that's, that's what I tend to stick with. Now, let's say you want to do the whole darn thing for whatever reason. You want to do all these images. Uh, just click on the top one, zoom all the way down to the bottom, mark them all, and hit process. Let's see what it does here. Hold on real quick. Now, what you could do right here is you could set up, if you have a preset, great. You could go into corrections and then make those modifications. Let's say I prefer this, the XDS2. 
You can change luminance and force details. I normally just leave it alone. You can set the lens sharpness optimization. Say we want it strong. Uh, leave the vignetting, chromatic aberration, lens distortion. Leave all those alone. You can set up the output, where you want it to go, and what format, just like we saw with the individual files, and then hit process now. Now, with these many images, it would take several hours, quite honestly, but we're not going to do that today. But let's go look at some results and see how it came out. Okay, so now we're over into Lightroom Classic, my preferred. This first image, we're going to crop it way down to here. And I'm doing that on purpose because I want to see how good it does with uh, significant crops. This is an ISO 12,800 image, 400 millimeter, f2.8, 1 1,000 of a second. You see right here, I have zero sharpening turned on, zero uh, noise reduction, zero color. And let's just crop this down to what I would normally look like. All right, so we've cropped it down. Here's the original raw file. See, it's very, very noisy. We're going to look at Deep Prime 3 version. It's cleaned up quite a bit, very sharp, sharpened it up quite a bit. So I really like this. Now, it is quite a still a bit of luminance noise out here. Uh, now, let's compare that to the XDS2. And you can see the luminous noise is basically all gone. It's very smooth. And this face is still nice and sharp. Now, just to show the comparison to Lightroom Classics on Denoise, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. I already did this earlier. And you can see, okay, the noise reduction is similar to maybe the XDS2 version. However, it is not nearly as sharp. And yes, you could go down here and monkey with the sharpening to try to approximate it. But the problem is the more you increase the sharpening, and we're about close right there, uh, you're also sharpening the pixels, which tends to make it look noisier. So that's the downside. Plus, now you're monkeying around with the, the sharpening on the images, and you may not want to spend the time to do that. So that's a nice thing about the uh, Pure Raw 5 is it will take care of that sharpening for you. All right, let's go to the next image. And again, pretty tight crop. This is the overall image, and I will crop it down significantly. So here we are. We're back at the original raw image. You see how noisy it is. This is the uh, Deep Prime 3 version. Again, nice and sharp image right here. Uh, there is some luminous noise in the background. Not horrible. Uh, let's see the XDS2. Nice, clean, very, I, I mean, uh, this is an 11,400 image, and it looks like it was shot at ISO 100. And remember, this is a huge crop I did on this image. And here is the Lightroom version. Just, it's not nearly as sharp. And for whatever reason, the original Lightroom images tend to be a little darker. And I don't know why that is, but it is a fact. And once again, here's the RAW. So RAW, and my personal preference, the XDS2. So significant difference. I think the image just really pops compared to what you see from the uh, original Lightroom Denoise. Let's do one more. And this one is a daytime photo, and it's going to be a little different. So again, a big crop. We're going to crop this down to this person right here throwing the ball. She's throwing it to first base. Softball game is a high school game. So the reason I picked a daytime game is because, as I mentioned before, Pure Raw 5 and 4 before it does a really good job of correcting for soft optics. This particular game I was photographing using a Nikon 100 to 400 zoom lens. It's not a super high-end lens. Uh, it's kind of a mid-tier lens, uh, but it has a variable aperture. And by itself, it's not as sharp as, say, like a 400 to 8. I also had a teleconverter on it. So you got a kind of a mid-level zoom lens with a teleconverter, 1.4x teleconverter, makes for kind of a soft image. And I'll go to the original RAW. And as you can see, besides the noise, because this is a shot at ISO 1100, so is there noise, it's not particularly, it's a little soft in her face. Well, let's go over here to the Deep Prime 3 version. 
and obviously the uh, noise is gone and it has really sharpened up all the edges. The little hairs are much more defined on her face. If we compare it to the XDS2, it's very similar. And what I have found at, with pure raw five images, at the very highest levels, ISO 10,000 you know, and above, you could noticeably see the difference between the two uh, technologies, the Prime 3 or the Deep Prime 3 and the XDS2. Uh, at the lower levels, like this one at uh, 1100, it's not as noticeable. And I think they're very similar to one another. But bottom line is it cleaned it up. It sharpened up her face so nicely. And you can really do see the distinctions in her hairs. If I were to take it to the Lightroom Denoise, which is what this is, it's just not as sharp. Yeah, it took care of the noise, but it's just not as sharp. And if you come down here and say you want to sharpen it up, we'll start scrolling to the right. And I, I got to really kind of crank it all the way up to get the same to my eye level, basically max it out to get the same level of sharpness. But the problem is, well, it starts to bring back some of the noise, which isn't too bad, but I really have to mess with the sharpening to get the same levels that I did when I had the XDS2 or even the original uh, Prime 3 in pure raw thought. So bottom line is it does do the job as far as sharpening lenses. And for a final test, what I want to do is compare the outputs from uh, Pure Raw 5 to P Topaz Photo AI, which is probably one of the other big competitors out there, in which I will probably be asked about in the comments if I don't make that comparison. So let's do that right now. This is an image that was processed in Topaz Photo AI, and I set it, it did its raw processing, strong, and I also told it to sharpen the subject. And here is the subject right here. So it did a pretty good job of sharpening the subject and the noise is reduced, especially you can see it right here. But there's something I wanna point out to you. Let me scroll over a little bit. If you look carefully, you can see all sorts of modeling back here in the background. And you would think, I mean, if you were looking at this very carefully, you might think there's like a haze or a smoke going on back here. So remember, Topaz Photo AI. Now let's compare that to say the Deep Prime 3 from uh, Pure Raw 5. Now I want you to look over here. So it is a grainy compare, it is about the same grain level as Topaz Photo AI. I will tell you that the subject is sharper, definitely sharper, more detail in the face from the Topaz Photo AI and that modeling kind of haze, weird haze look to it that you got, let me switch back, in the photo AI is not there anymore. Now let me compare that to the final one, which is this version is the Deep Prime XD2S, I have a hard time saying that, and it's again, very, very clean, cleaner than the Prime 3, definitely cleaner, looking background than the photo AI, which I'll switch back to right there. See all this modeling that's going on back here. And then we switch to the XDS2, nice, smooth, clean image. So this is a perfect example of why I do not use photo AI anymore and why I believe that DXL Pure Raw, now in its fifth version, is the best noise reduction software on the market today.